Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made four beautiful coasters using Arteza wood slices. I also used epoxy resin and some natural elements such as coffee beans, orange slices, flowers, uh, shells, all kinds of things to make some really natural looking coasters. If you stay tuned until the end, you'll see two extra projects which I made just to give you another idea of things you can do using the same method as I used to make the coasters. And here are some sneaky peeks. You'll see everything in much more detail at the end, so sit back and enjoy the video. <laughs> The wood slices from Arte's are really good quality. You get lovely defined rings in them and the bark is really strong. It doesn't feel like it's going to come off. Plus, they're already sanded. So, all you need to do is take them out of the box and create your magic. Of course, with them being a natural products, they do vary in size. And the size does vary from about three and a half inches to four inches. and they're just about the right size for coasters. I would like them to be a little bit bigger, but they do work well as coasters as they are. Right, for this project, the first thing you're going to need to do is make holes in your wood slices. And for that, I used a hole saw cutter, and it's just a drill a bit that you put in your drill, and you simply just cut a circle with it. You do need to be quite careful. It could be quite lethal in the wrong hands. <laughs> but make as long as you make sure you clamp down your wood slice and put it on something that you don't mind making a hole in, you'll be fine. Once the hole was cut, I sealed it with acrylic matte varnish. And only I only used that because it's it's what I had. Um, I'm not an expert on these things. You might know of something even better for sealing wood, but it does need to be sealed. And so, as I said, that's what I had and that's what I used and it absolutely worked fine. It was really good. And what I did was I used a brush to get it into all the cracks in the back just to make sure it's nice and secure because even though they do feel quite sturdy, Bark has the nature of getting flaky and falling off. So that's why I'm putting lots and lots of varnish just in there and then everywhere else. All around the outside, both faces and the inside. But what I would say, <clears throat> which I'm, I learned the hard way, is that you could do to have two coats on there. So let it dry, do another coat. I only did one. And I did get some bubbles in my resin. That's the thing with wood. If you put resin with wood, you're likely to get bubbles unless you seal it well. Once your varnish is completely dry, it's time to close the hole at the bottom of your coaster. There's two ways of doing it, and this is my favourite way. I've taken a silicon sheet and folded it in half, and I'm just pressing the coaster really hard onto the silicon sheet and filling the base of that hole with some UV resin. Only a thin layer, it just needs to be enough to cover the area of that circle and then I'm going to cure it. So I just squeezed some out into the middle and I'm just guiding it to the edges with a stick and yeah, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> really you can see what I'm doing yeah just put it all up to the edges oh and another thing I did was I spread it up the sides of the hole as well just for some extra protection just so it's really well sealed uh, for when I put the resin in later and just like with epoxy resin, you will need to burst any micro bubbles. And I'm using my kitchen torch but on the tiniest of flames. And you probably missed it. I did it so quickly. You really don't need to do it much and the bubbles burst. And then you can put it under the UV light for about three minutes and allow it to cure. So 
So after three minutes under the lamp, all I did was I peeled off that silicon mat and it was ready. So now you've got that cavity that won't leak and you can just pour your resin in and it's perfect that way. Now, there is another way of doing it and it's my least favourite way, but it's the way you can do it if you don't have UV resin because I don't expect you to go out to the shops to buy UV resin. And what I've done here is I've got sticky backed plastic and I've just stuck it to the back of the wood slice to block the hole. Now you might think that's the easiest option and it's probably the cheapest option because UV resin isn't particularly cheap but it's not the best option because it leaks unless you can clamp it down onto something or unless you can get some really sticky sticky back plastic. I've never found any really really sticky sticky back plastic it just peels off wood so your choice right i raided my box of resin embellishments that i've stored away for years i've had these orange slices for years and never used them but i thought it would be ideal for this job so for my first coaster i have an orange slice in there a dried one i didn't quite think it through i didn't think about the fact that you know the acids and other things in that orange might not quite work <laughs> very well with the resin. Um, I did get a few extra bubbles that I wasn't expecting because I hadn't thought it through. But if I did this again, I think I would uh, varnish that orange slice just like I did with the wood before <laughs> putting it in the resin. Now for the next one, I've got some dried moss. Now this stuff is really good and it's dyed. I, I was a little bit worried the fact that it's been dyed that reddy colour that the dye might come out into the resin but it didn't. So for this one I'm doing a sea theme because I thought the dried moss looked like um, coral and so I'm going to use that and some shells. I had already prepared three small shells but not thinking things through again um, I forgot that the fact that the resin is in the bottom, that resin that I sealed the hole with, makes the depth of the cavity smaller. So <laughs> the, um, the shells which fit before I put the UV resin in no longer did fit. So I had to raid my shell collection again to find something smaller. So that is one thing. Doing it the way I did it with the UV resin at the bottom, you do obviously reduce the depth of your cavity. I'm just using a stick there over the top to check to see if it's level with that shelling and it wasn't. <laughs> Once I'd found shells that would fit, I popped them in and then just poured in my resin. And I'm using Resin Pro Transparent Resin for the cavities. And when that's all set, I'm going to be putting a top coat of heat resistant resin on because they're going to be coasters. But we'll talk about that later. So I'm just pouring it on and I'm not going all the way to the top in any of these coasters and the reason being that I'm putting things in there that could float up and if I do it right to the top then I, once once it's cured I'm kind of stuck because I'll have lumps and bumps and I've already gone right to the top so I just do about halfway up, up with the resin and then let it cure before I do the top coat of the heat resistant resin. I'm just poking it around <laughs> to get rid of any bubbles and to make sure it's all coated and then on to the next one. Right, for this one I'm going to be using pressed flowers which I pressed last summer so they're all nice and dried out ready for this coaster now. And I've just added a little bit of resin first of all this one actually will go up to the top <laughs> just because I needed two layers of resin. So I put a little bit in, then I'm going to just lay the flowers on. This is a wild garlic flower from my mum's garden. And 
I've got forget-me-nots as well. And once the flowers are in place, all I do is just add some more resin over the top. Once the resin is in, just blast it with the kitchen torch. Well, I say blast it, don't blast it. <laughs> More of a tickle. <laughs> tickle it with the kitchen torch on a really, really low flame because you don't want to burn the wood, do you? <laughs> that would be a bad idea. So, yeah, really low flame. Anyway, we're missing what we're doing. We're on to coffee beans. So the same, exact same process. I, I did fiddle around quite a lot with these because I wanted to get them so you could see the side with the detail on. And so I was trying messing about turning them all over. But then I just poured the resin on top and again left a little bit of space because coffee beans do tend to float up. And then that was that. And again the kitchen torch but with the kitchen torch you do need to keep going back and going back and going back every few minutes I would say every 10 minutes go back and check because you're using natural things that do produce extra air bubbles and they will appear when you think they're all gone you'll turn your back and they'll come back and you'll get more coming so keep going back bursting any bubbles that come up with your torch and yeah, you need to kind of babysit them a little bit. Okay, so it's the next day and it's time for my top coat of heat resistant resin. And the resin I'm using today is called Top Pro and it's made by Resin Pro. And it's heat resistant up to 200 degrees C. And it's a really, really good resin. I've tried other heat resistant resins, but this is my favourite by far. And the reason it's my favourite is because when I've used heat resistant resins in the past, for some reason you do get the quite sensitive to moisture in the air heat resistant resins. The more sensitive than normal resins. And so any moisture in the air can cause the I mean blush and with this one I'm not saying it would never happen but for me I've had my best results with this and I hardly ever get any I mean blush marks on the top of my resin so that's why it's my favorite you'll see at the end shortly the lovely shine and clarity you get with it anyway I'll stop waffling all I'm doing here is just pouring it on in the middle, spreading it out to the sides, really carefully to the sides so it doesn't go over. And then you just leave it. You just let it balance at the edge. Don't let it go over like it did on my first one. If you eagle-eyed people amongst you noticed, yeah, it did. It went over the edge. <laughs> so, yeah, just let it rest just at the very edge and make sure you've got enough on, look at it from all angles, and then just leave it to cure. Okay, I let it cure until the next day, and we're ready to look at the finished results. The coffee bean one was really hard to photograph. So I'm hoping in, in this shot you can see it a little bit better than you could in the photograph. And it's turned out really pretty. I love the texture you get from the coffee beans. And here's the sea themed one. And as I turn it you can see the lovely shine. I really like that dried moss, you know. I think I might use that some more. And the orange one now, that one. The orange, well the resin didn't like the orange. They didn't get on with each other at all. But I do love it when you hold it up to the light. I think it would make a nice one that if you hung, hung one in the window with like one of those suction cup things, I think it would work really well in the window. Uh, but yeah, hope, I, I think you can probably see the strange things that went on in there with the orange. And the flower one, they're not completely bubble free. By any means, because I didn't quite babysit them as well as I should have done. But I'm happy with them. What do you think? I'd love to know what you think. And here's something else I made. One of the bonus projects. It's hung in my craft room 
on my storage wall and it's just kind of a the same thing again you making the coasters but I've made it into a wall hanging and strung them together and put some beads on these ones turned out really bubbly actually um, not sure what I did differently but I like the idea and it does look nice in my craft room and I made a key hook and for this one I decided because nothing needs to stand on them I could have um, thick things with the texture standing out of the resin which gave it a completely new dimension and I did get a bit carried away when I used that huge thistle but still <laughs> I like the little miniature pine cones and the corn so yeah I think that turned out really great as well so you know you can use these um, wood slices for more than just coasters let your imagination run wild I hope you've enjoyed my video and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.